So I'm going to be making a fishing lure today and no, I've never made one before, but I have seen Marlin Bates do it quite a bit. So basically I'm an expert now. The real reason why I wanted to make this fishing lure is because my buddy told me that I couldn't. Not that I won't, but I couldn't or I'm not capable of. And I thought to myself, that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. So I said, watch me. I'm thinking top water, jointed bait, jitterbug mouth, spinny tail. But it's gonna be diseased. It's gonna be a diseased fox. And this is everything I have to make it with. So I don't have the most tools and gear to make it. I think that should be pretty good, pretty good size. So this is a piece of poplar wood. Poplar is a pretty soft wood. Oops, it's gonna be easy to carve. Can you guys see what's going on? So, got two roughly six inch pieces of poplar. Now the next step is to wood glue these together and then clamp them together for about an hour. Non-toxic and no harmful fumes. I'll be the judge of that. I'm just gonna kind of plop it down. Well, it's been one hour. That's now the thicker parts are a little bit spongy still. Something like that. Now, this is the bird's eye view of basically my fox. As you guys can tell, I tried making an oversized head for it. And this is the body, and then these are actually gonna be the hind legs right here. Safety first. I don't even know how this is gonna go. To be honest with you, it took me a solid 30 seconds to even figure out how to turn it on. Looks like we might have to do it uh, the old fashioned way. I'll figure out a better way to do that, but I got it cut. Really smooth. But uh, my neighbors must hate me right now. This thing is slowly coming together. Still looks like a block of nothing right now. But I think the next step I'm gonna do is just start carving away. This is going to take a very long time to carve. I made some dimensions on the side of this bait. If you look at the corner here, because I wanna actually take off this whole block right here. And I don't wanna carve past this line I made because that's what I'm gonna carve into the hind legs. Today out on the 
So I've been carving now for maybe an hour and a half. And this is what I have so far. I got a little bit of uh, leg detail in the back. Got a little bit of head detail. Got the ears. Got the nose. But uh, I think I'm gonna keep the size of the head. Like I said earlier in the video, I did wanna have like an oversized head just so I can kind of fit the oversized red eyes. I wanna carve the underside of the side of the arm right here. I carved that and I wanna kinda carve right there. So it's coming together right now. And part of the reason why I think I'm going to keep the belly flat um, is for buoyancy reasons. Now every jitterbug I've ever thrown is super light. So I don't think I'm gonna be adding any lead or anything to the bottom of this bait. What I think I'm gonna do is just hope that the treble hooks and the split rings will be heavy enough um, just to keep it upright. I'm hoping with the weight of that like bill and the hooks, um, it'll keep this bait upright. About two hours to carve this and this bait might not work at all because honestly I have no idea what I'm doing. I think I'm gonna cut the head off and then cut it right back here, right before the feet and make it a three piece bait. So you can kind of picture those big red eyes being on the front of this bait. But honestly, not bad for my first ever wood carving. Never carved wood before, <laughs> never made a fishing lure before, so a lot of firsts. I'm trying to think of the next step. Is the next step painting? Got the uh, three pieces of my bait. Now I just have to uh, make the hardware. So half of an inch and a half is 0.75. In order to make my eyelets, I have this Allen wrench here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this loop around that Allen wrench. So, it broke inside the chuck. There's one joint connection. I wanted to put that portion of the joint, which is, I think it's way too late now. First joint connection right here. But I'm not gonna lie, I think I'm on to the right track because all I have to do is just super glue both of these into either side of the bait and I'm looking pretty good still. But as you guys can tell, the loops here are a little messed up. What I think I'm just gonna do is use some existing screw eyelets that I have and just use these instead. I know I said I was gonna make my own hardware, but. So I got these pieces of my lure kind of clipped to this board. Now what I'm gonna do now is go outside and spray them down with water seal. So the pieces that I put Thompson's water seal on is dry enough to where I can start adding the hardware with super glue. I'm gonna take some gel super glue and I'm going to put it down the connector holes. All right, so the next step is to prime the bait 
And I think I'm just going to prime the bait with white. Well, I messed up. I think I got a little ahead of myself just because I don't really know what I'm doing. But what I realized was I can't have these horizontal connectors. They have to be vertical. All right, so I fixed all the hardware. And as you guys can tell, there are holes in the baits from where the other holes were. So I think I'm just gonna fill those up with five minute epoxy and then just paint over them. He's starting to set up already. A little bit of gel super glue. One eyeball. Like I said, I need the other eyeball to uh, touch the other one. Just because I don't think I really left a lot of room. So. Got all of my baits dangling right now. And what I'm gonna do is fill up this little tray with epoxy, but not only a clear coat. I'm gonna be adding a little bit of mica powder and then a little bit of red glitter. All right, got the clear coat on. All right, so the pieces all dried. It's roughly about 16 hours later. And it, and I put in a little bit too much red glitter. I even told myself as I was dumping it in, just a little bit. And I thought I did only put in just a little bit, but I mean, as you guys can tell, this bait is covered in red glitter, which I'm not actually that mad about. To be honest though, I don't know if I can get this to focus. But there are a ton of lumps in the clear coat. I need new clear coat for sure. See how, see how there's all this clumping? I still have to use this because this is the only epoxy that I have. Not the best connection job. Not even gonna lie, kinda honestly bad, but what are you gonna do? My first bait. Left, got the uh, jitterbug bill on, got the split rings on the bottom, got this little hitchhiker on the back. This is what I'm gonna be attaching the tail to. All done. Got the uh, triple hooks on the bottom here. Got the tail all made up, now it's uh, Basically just tying it on and sending it. That's the right kind of angle. And then I also kind of hope this line tie I put on also helps the bait kind of move back and forth. I also could have no idea what I'm talking about because this is my first bait. Looks rather atrocious, but I actually kind of like it. It's my first bait, so. So I have made it to the pond I'm going to be fishing today and not a very big pond, maybe about 50 acres. And that's where I decided to try out my diseased fox. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys, this kind of final product of my diseased fox here kind of looks more like a Christmas fox with the green, white and red kind of glitter. I definitely need to buy an airbrush, but I'm not going to buy one because I want to buy other things first. All right, get this thing on the road here. I'll do the best I can to show you the action of the bait, but the action is kind of non-existent. So it's just kind of like a nice slow meandering back and forth, not super loud by any means. Doesn't 
even though this bait is pretty big, it doesn't put off a huge amount of commotion. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Um, nice, subtle uh, bubble, really subtle bubble. When it comes back, it's not loud like a normal uh, jitterbug would be. Oh, look at that. Something followed it. Didn't want it though. I have to put a smaller hook on that back treble as well. It keeps snagging the tail. I gotta take off those feathers. Feathers are a no-go. If it's not the tail that's getting stuck on that back hook, like that, it's those feathers. So I'm opting just to take those feathers completely off. All right, that's better. I even think the bait works a little bit better too. Oh yeah, that's working way better. All right, fishing now for a little over an hour. And I'm switching over to the Wacky Rig Senko for a little bit just to see if I can uh, get bit on anything today. That feels like a nice one. That is a nice one. Why couldn't I have been throwing the rat right there? I'm curious if this big bass would have hit the... Uh... Dude, he is just pulling me. I'm just going for a ride with him. Okay, nice. Nice bass. Not a bad one right here. Am I even filming? Yes. Yes, I am. Not a bad bass. Probably about a two and a half pounder here. Two and a quarter, maybe. Oh, God. I didn't even see any of this over here. There's a bite. Little Larry. Oh, look at that. Got eaten by something. 
not too long ago. Fueled up and eaten though. Let's do a little bit of a switchback. Hey, how are you? Yeah, caught like a two and a half pounder and a one pounder. Oh, nice. Yep. On a worm. That's like, a, yeah, it's like a big uh, jitterbug. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get something on it. Like before I catch like a nine pounder on it. Right? Yeah, I've had a couple follows on it, but I haven't had any takers. One of them actually came up and I don't know if it tried hitting it and just missed it completely or... Just tried scaring it. I don't know what, but cool. Yeah, it doesn't really work that well, but I mean, it's the first lure I've ever made, so yeah. yeah. Here, try one of these things. I picked some of those things up. The power oh. bait frogs. Yep. Nice. They're super weedless. If you want to see if those things work. Yeah. You're probably better at fishing weedless than I. Am. Yeah, I'll try that out. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think it'll happen because it's kind of big and not a lot of action, but you never know. All right, I gotta get back on the board with another fish. There's one. That was all the way on the bottom. Get up here. So another one on the wacky. As soon as I switch from my lure to the wacky I get bit Oh my gosh, that's a nice one. Nice fish. I'm gonna sit down for him. Nice fish. Or not, what the heck? I might have had a hitchhiker on there. Not gonna, oh, you know what? Looks like I'm on top of some sort of beaver dam. He could have been wrapped around a stick. Dang it. Well, that is it for this bait this evening. Not the last time you're gonna see this bait. I am gonna bring it out a few more times because I definitely want to catch a fish on it. So that is it for this evening and not too bad from my first time being back here in five or six years. Not only that, this is only the second time that I've been here. Of course, as soon as I start talking, there's a plane. Hasn't been a plane all day, but. And overall, pretty happy how my bait worked. Once I took off those feathers, the bait worked so much better. I'm terrible at carving wood. I'm terrible at painting, but that bait didn't turn out terrible. It didn't turn out good by any means but it didn't turn out terrible. It works, I know I can catch some fish on it, I just didn't get 
bit tonight and I used it for longer than I'd like to admit. If I was using the wacky rig like all evening, I probably would have caught seven, eight fish. Not the last time I'm gonna be making a bait on this channel. I already have an idea for my next bait. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.